is a beautiful summer-like day down on the shores of Lake Ontario. Getting to canoes out, summer is almost here. We'll move inside to Rogers Center tonight where the San Francisco Giants will come to town and take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Hello, everybody. I'm Buck Martinez along with Pat Tabler. And Pat, the Blue Jays just finished up a nine-game road trip. They are so happy to be back home. They had an off day yesterday, a chance to regroup, but they have played much better ball at home of late. You talk to any ball player in the major leagues, and there's something about playing at home. Maybe it's the familiar surroundings or the knowledge that you are batting last, but the Blue Jays, like everybody else, have played so much better at home. The ERA is better, the batting average is better, and they're scoring more runs. Tonight's pitcher, Brandon Morrow, is coming off a tough luck loss last time out against the Rockies, and in four and five, he has pitched much better than that record might indicate. This guy is really starting to turn things around. And he has really pitched well here at the Rogers Center, except for his first start against the Chicago White Sox when he lasted just four innings and gave up seven runs. Morrow has been outstanding here at the Rogers Center. 4-0 with a great earn run average. And the one thing I really like, Buck, is he has averaged seven times, seven innings every time he has taken the mound. Yeah, he has really stretched things out now. And we're going to face the San Francisco Giants on Wednesday. Aubrey Huff and Juan Uribe went back to back. They're really starting to swing the bats well. Yeah, something, the ingredient that the Giants were missing early in the year was their offense. They are now up to third in the National League in batting average. And these two have been the main reasons. One and two on the team in terms of our eyes and they pack a big punch. Well, they sure do, and you can see when the Giants score first, they don't give up early leads. They've got a good pitching staff. Yeah, I think that's because they had great starters and a very deep bullpen, so if something Brandon Moore is going to watch tonight, he's got to keep them off the board early. Well, for more on the Giants and their starting pitcher, let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Buck, we're located just above the San Francisco bullpen where Barry Zito continues to get ready for this start. When you talk about Zito, you have to go back to the 2002 season, his Cy Young Award winning season. But let's talk a little bit about Zito with the Giants. He signed a seven-year, $126 million deal before the 07 season and has yet to win more than 11 games for San Francisco. But that looks as if things are changing. Let's take you back to Sunday. In his last start against his former team, Zito went seven innings, gave up six hits, struck out eight while walking three to improve to seven and two on the season. When you look at this 13 game start, you compare it to last year, it doesn't really compare. Zito's been great this year. The seven and two start over the 13 game stretch represents the best since he won the Cy Young Award with Oakland in 2002. Well, Barry Zeta will be a tough mound opponent, but the Blue Jays are back home. Six and three the last time they played here at Rogers Center. They love to have the bats come around against the Giants and get this thing turned back in the right direction.
Rogers Center is wide open. The umpires are meeting at home plate, going over the ground rules. It's the first game of the series, so they take a little bit longer time with the ground rules. The Jays' dugout is anxious to start off this homestand. Originally scheduled to be a nine-game homestand, just six now, as the Cardinals will follow the Giants into town. And then the Philadelphia series, of course, has been moved to Philadelphia. Bob Overbay starting to swing the bat with a lot more confidence. He is coming around, doing a good job. John Buck had a big road trip at 321, and he finished up with three home runs in San Diego. Take a look at the Giants lineup. Bruce Bochy is their manager. Freddie Sanchez back on the active roster, playing at second base. He's been swinging a hot bat 360 over his last six games. And you see Aubrey Huff, we mentioned his home run. He and Uribe went back to back on Wednesday against the Orioles in the league play. Pat Pearl, recently signed by the Giants as the DH. Sandoval, Posey, Molina, and Rowan round out the Giants lineup, and they're set to face Brandon Morrow. It's an offense. The Giants here are really hitting their stride now, third in the National League. In terms of batting average, Brandon Morrow takes the mound for his 14th start of the season. It's pitched very well of late. Although he has just one win to show for his last three starts, Morrow's been terrific, giving up just three runs, 12 hits over his last 20 innings of work, including 15 strikeouts over those 20 innings. Matched up against the Colorado Rockies last time out. Gave up just one run in six innings. He has never faced the Giants in his career. Scouting report for Brandon Morrow. He is free and easy. It's so fun to watch as that ball explodes out of his hand. It's a four-pitch mix. Fastball slider. Group ball and a changeup from Morrow. Hot starter. Last four. Earned run average just over two. And opponents hitting just 185 against Brandon Morrow. And he's been very fun to watch. Another thing he's improved upon is his control not walking many that has always been a problem for him but now Bruce Walton the pitching coach said he didn't even think about walks with Morrow now he's making quality pitches I think that's part of what Brandon Morrow is all about the, the base on balls because you throw so hard that he's going to be around the plate but you can see the marked improvement from Brandon Morrow from the beginning of the year that he is in the strike zone and down and when he does that he's a very effective pitcher Defensively for the Blue Jays, Adam Lynn gets the start in left field. He'll be joined by Fred Lewis in center field. Jose Bautista back out in right field. Encarnacion Gonzalez. Hill and Overbay forms the infield third to first. Tonight's battery, Jose Molina behind the plate with Brandon Moore. And Adam Lind has been playing a lot of outfield. In fact, this is his fifth straight start in left field for the Blue Jays. He'll be roaming around out there. Fred Lewis in center field as Ferdinand Wells is in the lineup. Vernon Wells will be the DH tonight. Just get him off his legs for nine innings of defense. Andres Torres set to face Brandon Morrow here as we start this ball game. Torres is a switch hitter batting left-handed against Morrow. First pitch strike at 92, and that's a dramatic change from what Morrow was when the Giants last saw him pitching for Seattle, he was all about velocity, and now he's all about making quality pitches. Popped up. Third baseline. And kind of shown in fair territory. Makes the grab. One out. 96 is great. 97, 98 is great. But if you can't control it and you're always falling behind, major league hitters will catch up to it. It's a different type of pitcher now with Brandon Morrow. Pitcher would probably be the best way to describe the way he is throwing. First pitch, breaking balls, off-speed pitches, and then still using that big arm. Just anything to disrupt the tying of the hitter. Pretty good hitter stepping in now. Freddie Chan Sanchez, former batting champ, batting 343. Outside for a ball. Went too far. Sanchez chased that breaking ball in the dirt to even the count at one and one. I'm sure you'll see a lot of those type of swings or check swings, especially in interleague play, because hitters are not familiar with the pitcher. Again, Brandon Morrow has never faced the Giants, so they are getting their first look at the big right-hander. Another pop-up as Sanchez is late.
There is his interleague career numbers. But this is a different type of pitcher. 30 strikeouts and 27 innings pitched for Morrow. 1-2, lined into left field. That's going to get down in front of Adam Lynn Sanchez. Big turnaround first base, and he'll stop there. A one-out single for Freddy Sanchez, and he continues to swing a hot bat since being activated off the disabled list on the 19th of May. Well, it's no accident that he's hitting over 340. You mentioned the batting title when he was with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and you can see why when you see his approach at the plate. Very short swing. Aubrey Huff. Blue Jays are very familiar with Huff having spent time with Tampa Bay and the Orioles his first season in San Francisco. Off to a good start. That 11th home run game Wednesday afternoon. The ball down. That was a splashdown version of the home run in San Francisco. He hit it totally out of the ballpark and into the bay. Pretty hot hitter over his last 19 games. Looks like a change up 89 miles an hour. Morrow is truly a four pitch pitcher now. He's really refined his secondary pitches to a point where he can use them at any time. I think his slider has improved a lot, and there's another pitch that he has really refined this year. That two seed fastball. Two seam fastball, something that Bruce Walton gave him when he first met Brandon Morrow. They talked about it. Morrow had never thrown a two seam fastball, but boy, he's really mastered it using it to both sides of the plate. You can use it to left handers to try and get him to roll over on it, but what's impressive is he's using it on the inner half also. A fouls it back. Two balls and two strikes here. One out in the first. Freddy Sanchez aboard with a one out single. There's that two-seamer inside. It just missed the inside corner. Yeah, he tried. That's that pitch made famous by Greg Maddox where you tie up that left-handed hitter. Trying to get him to freeze on that inner half, but it, you can see it just didn't come back enough for him to get the strikeout. Be a full count to Aubrey Huff. There goes Sanchez. Huff fouls it off. Sanchez was moving on the pitch. Oh, got a piece of it. Stay out of the double play. Get that runner moving a little bit. Huff has a good idea at the plate. Really doesn't strike out a lot. But you better get a good jump if he swings through the, the pitch. Jose Molina behind the plate has done a good job this year of throwing out runners. There goes Sanchez. Line drive right field. Sanchez around second. This ball goes all the way to the wall. Sanchez coming around third. He'd be held there. Aubrey Huff stops at first. A long single for Aubrey Huff, and the Giants are threatening here in the first. It's an offense that the Giants sputtered at the beginning of the season, but now they have scored at least six runs eight times in their last 13 games. So they are scoring lots of runs and they're in scoring position now. Ripped right by Bautista. He does a good job of coming up and not throwing it to the cutoff man. But a one hop to the second baseman to keep the double play in order. Well, that's a heads up play because the Blue Jays are so adept at turning double plays and now a double play will get you out of the inning. First and third one out for Juan Uribe. Uribe the shortstop. Inside just off the plate. He too, like Aubrey Huff, has been swinging a hot bat lately. 42 RBIs now leads the club. Upstairs 2 and 0. Oh.
Looks like Miles just having a little trouble here in the first inning, finding his release point, making that consistent pitch. He had Sanchez with two strikes and was not able to finish him off. Same with Aubrey Huff. He was not able to throw the pitch that he needed to get an out. Breaking ball off the plate, three and zero. Oh. Don't be surprised if Uribe's got the green light here against Marl. The anticipating way, a fastball. Yeah, the way that he has been swinging the bat, you mentioned over his last 11 games, production galore from their three and four hitters over the last 14 or 15 games. Green light, chase the bad one. It's one thing managers are reluctant to give that green light very often because hitters lose their focus and he expanded his zone, chased that high fastball. He has power, Uribe. Spent some years with the Chicago White Sox and topped out at 23 home runs a few years ago. You can always reach back when you've got that extra velocity. Full count. Molina checking with the bench. Aubrey Huff at first base probably going to run here. Not running. Popped up out of play. Huff was holding his ground at first. I like what Molina is doing back there. Usually, you know, the sequence one's a fastball, two's a curve, three's a slider, and usually go through a one, two, a three, but he gives a little shake sign tomorrow to maybe put breaking ball in the mind of the hitter and then drops the fastball down. Full count, one out here in the first. Got him. Chase the slider down and away. Uribe expanded his zone three times. Morrow was behind 3-0, and and Uribe just chased some bad pitches. He was in the driver's seat, 3-0, and swung at three pitches out of the strike zone. Two fastballs up, put fastball in his mind. Breaking ball check swing. How about Molina with the pick? Look at that play. Looks like a first baseman digging the ball out of the dirt. Yeah, he saved a run for sure, but also calling a 3-2 slider to a very aggressive Uribe. There was a time when Brandon Morrow could only think about throwing a 3-2 fastball. Now he's got everything at his disposal and a veteran catcher that will lean on it. I think the pitch before really put fastball in the mind of Uribe when he shook him off and then put fastball down and he fouled it off. And as a hitter, you, you've never faced a guy. You're thinking, okay, he's going to come right back, cross him up with a breaking ball. Two outs. Pat Burrow takes a pitch upstairs. Bro picked up by the Giants after Tampa Bay designated him. He has played some in the outfield, which he likes. Of course, his roots are in the National League. Came up with the Phillies. That slider in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Boy, he's turned his season around since he signed with the Giants. He wasn't close when we saw him with no. Tampa Bay. Could that really make that big of a difference playing every day in the field as opposed to DH? Certainly seems as though with Pat Burrow that just the chance to get back in the outfield has helped him. Three balls and no strikes again. Marl falling behind. I, I know that Burrow said that when he was with Tampa Bay that he would rather play in the field. On that team, you're the DH. You're a run producer, but now over in the National League, he's got to pick up his glove. I guess it works. 3.55 average. A four-pitch walk loads the bases. Two out base on balls issued by Brandon Morrow. And he has to deal with a tough Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval. The switch hitting third baseman is in a little bit of a slump now. Just starting to wake up a little bit with the bat, but he's always a dangerous hitter. Beginning of the year, they had him hitting a little bit higher in the lineup, third and fourth. This guy could really break. I think moving him down into an RBI situation has taken the pressure off of him. 
Mar really having trouble with his release point right now, and Benji, Benji Jose Molina is going out to talk to him here. Molina always encouraging Mara to keep that front shoulder closed. That'll keep him on line and in a real good delivery. And if you don't keep that front shoulder closed, the arm drags a little bit. And you don't have the lower half working with the upper half. Ball starts sailing on you. Pretty good numbers for Sandoval in interleague play. Off the plate, 2-0. And, oh. and just when we had talked about Morrow and how efficient he had been at throwing strikes, he comes out in the first inning and battles his command a bit. Two singles in the inning. A two-out walk has pushed his pitch count here in the first to 26. Chained up three and up. Try to take a little off and get Sandoval thinking maybe I'm going to light one up, but he's got the patience to lay off of it. Mario came all the way back from a 3 0 count to get Uribe. Walks in a run. Back to back walks with two outs here. The Giants score first. Bruce Walton very quickly out to the mound to talk to his young right hander. He does such a good job of keeping everything positive and he goes out on the mound. Sometimes he'll say, Hey, you having fun? What do you think about this situation? What, what are you thinking about right now? Now yesterday, Bruce Walton came out and played catch with Brandon Morrow on the off day. Bruce, the pitching coach, loves to have his pitchers keep their arm fresh and make sure that they keep using it even on off days. So he was out here about four in the afternoon throwing this playing catch and having what he called a nice one on one with Morrow. Could he have said to him, hey, if you want to go into the wind up, if you feel a little bit better winding up, do that now with the bases loaded? Yeah. That's always a possibility. He's always looking for something that'll get his pitchers turned around. Buster Posey, the rookie, takes the first pitch up. Three forty-four with a homer and seven RBI. Here's where a catcher will oftentimes call a breaking pitch, even though it's 2 and 0, just to get him back in that good delivery and force him to follow through and drive that pitch home. And get on top. You got to get on top if you're going to throw a breaking ball. Giants hitters look very patient at the play, and I think they sense that Morrow is a little out of whack right now. There's a fastball in there. Two balls and a strike, two outs here in the first inning. Foul back. Two and two. Moore's challenge here is to minimize the damage. Get out of this with one run and Everybody feels pretty good about it. And I think this is the action pitch right here. Two and two, two outs. You know he does not want to go to three and two. He's going to have to come up with something good against Buster Posey, who's hitting 344. Two two pitch on the ground, up the middle. Gonzalez behind second, throws the hill for the force. Morrow does minimize the damage. Gets good defense from Alex Gonzalez. San Francisco scores first. It's one to nothing, Giants.
Blue Jays trail by a run here as they're set to bat bottom of the first inning. It's Lewis Hill Lynn. Vernon Wells, the DH tonight. Gonzalez Bautista and then Lyle Overbay. Over his last 16 games, he's been swinging a red hot bat, hitting 351. Found about five doubles, three home runs. He's quieted his body, and because of that, the head stays still and can get that back through the zone. He's really swinging the bat well. Good production. I like to see him drive the ball. Three home runs and nine RBIs. Barry Zito. Beat his whole team, the Oakland A's, his last start on Saturday, allowing two runs in seven innings. That snapped a four-start winless drought for Zito. It was also his 10th quality start in 13 outings this year. Hasn't faced the Blue Jays for a while. That was back in 2006, his last season with the Oakland A's. 5-2, and two, 352 earned on average in his career starts. Fred Lewis swings at the first pitch and pops it into left field over near the line. Long run for Aubrey Huff, and he takes it in fair territory. One out here in the first. It's a good defensive team, the San Francisco Giants. When you look around, you say, hey, these guys could really field Huff, Rowan, and Torres. They have committed just two errors in their last 12 games. Buster Posey, the rookie, will play at first base. He came up as a catcher. Juan Uribe has played a great shortstop along with the offensive production we have seen from Uribe. He's only made three errors this season. Spent about six years with the White Sox and did a great job there in Chicago and he's now in his second year with the Giants. Aaron Hill takes a pitch up and away. Two balls and no strikes. Barry Zito won't light up the radar guns as he did early in his career with Oakland, but boy, he has turned things around this year. It's been a tough stretch for him since he signed with the Giants. He's that patented curveball he's always had. He hasn't had a winning record for San Francisco in the three years coming into this year that he had pitched for San Francisco. And you watch him this year, he's a different pitcher. Looks like he's using his fastball more. To really set up that good breaking ball. And the curveball, this one's popped up behind the mound. Sanchez takes charge and makes the play. Two quick outs here in the first. He's been doing it all year. Barry Zito off to his best start. He'll challenge hitters with everything. He'll make you put the ball in play, so be ready. He makes very good in-game adjustments. Uses all of his pitches, the curveball, the slider, everything. And he'll use the adjustments in that curveball. You mentioned it. It's been a dominating curveball for a long time. He'll also throw cutters and sinkers and fastballs. But that curveball is his out pitch. Adam Lynn, the left fielder tonight, takes the first pitch strike. 207. Surprising batting average for Lynn, who hit 300 a year ago. 0-2. Barry Zito, the Cy Young Award winner in 2002 with the Oakland Athletics, went 23 and 5 that year. Another pop-up left field. This one, an easy play for Aubrey Huff. Three up, three down in the first. Just eight pitches for Barry Zito. Giants score first. It's one to nothing.
The Jays on Roger Sportsnet, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Welcome back to the Rogers Center. Uh, one nothing San Francisco here as we move to the top of the second inning. Guys, a quick injury update for you. An MRI on Dustin McGowan's arm showed nothing new. And so as a result of that, he will pay a visit to Dr. James Andrews come Monday to see if there are any new developments and how he can treat this injury that has been nagging him here the last couple of years. He had a throwing session just a, a few days ago through eight pitches, had to shut it down because of soreness in that right shoulder. So he will see James Andrews on Monday. Thank you, Sam. It's a sad story that Brandon, uh, Dustin McGowan hasn't been able to get healthy for the last couple of years. Maybe he'll get some good news from Dr. Andrews. Well, Benji Molina steps in right in front of his brother, Jose Molina. Benji, of course, one of the three Molina catching brothers. How about that? Three major league catchers in one family. But they also have each a World Series ring. That's pretty impressive. That's right. And we'll see the other one on Tuesday. Next homestand. Yep. And Jose is the only original catcher. The other two were converted. Benji hits one up the middle. Aaron Hill knows he's got some time and throws out Benji Molina. What a play. Going to the backhand, stabbed it, and then knew he had a little time with Molina, who does not run well, and he throws him out at first. He knows that from the years that he played with Benji here. Great extension by Hill. Got a good jump on that ball. And once he corralled it, came up to his knees and was able to throw a strike over to Overbay for the first out. Got a lot on that throw. So there's one out now. In the top of the second inning, the center fielder Aaron Rowan batting ninth. Lays off that high. Looked like a change up at 85. Got underneath it, and that ball just sailed up out of the zone. And that's why Jose Molina keeps telling him, keep that front shoulder closed so that arm doesn't drag and you get underneath the ball. There have not been many high strikes called here tonight. No. Pitchers, mute the home plate umpire. pitchers will have to key in on that and know that you're not going to get that high strike. That pitch looked like it was just above the belt. Call the ball. And then the umpire will see a better swing at that one after he's called it a ball and say, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that ball is too high to be a strike, and then he chases one right in the same spot. Two balls and a strike with one out here. On the ground. Big hop for Encarnacion. He throws out Rowan. Well, I'll tell you what. Lyle Overbay is so consistent over at first helping out the infielders. You just kind of take him for granted, but he does a great job. In playing first base, there isn't one way to go and dig a ball out of the dirt because there's so many different ways that that ball comes over there. Sometimes it'll be a short hop like this. That's a short hop. There's the in-between hop. There's the ball to your backhand side, your front side, the ball off the turf. There's so many different ways that that ball will bounce over there. You have to have that sure hand at first base to save those errors. Certainly frees up the infielders to know that they've got Overbay over there to help them out. Andres Torres takes the first pitch ball. Pops this ball up down the right field line. Aaron Hill calls for it and makes the grab. Just nine pitches in the inning for Brandon Morrow. Quite a turnaround. And now he look for his hitters to bounce back against Cito.
only played nine games against each other, but San Francisco certainly has the upper hand. Jays won the first game when they faced each other in the last one. In between, they lost seven in a row to the Giants, and they've outpitched them and out hit them in all those categories. Get a chance here this three-game series. Brennan Wells takes that big curveball on the corner for a strike. Wells, as we mentioned, the DH tonight. Another curveball tapped at his feet. Brennan hit his 16th home run in the sixth inning of Wednesday's game. He came against Kevin Correa as Correa couldn't get out of the sixth. Kerwin Danley down at first base had no swing on the appeal. Popped up behind home plate. Benji Molina with the mask off over near the dugout and makes the catch. Somewhat familiar with his surroundings when he got over there toward that dugout, having played with the Blue Jays. So he knew he had plenty of room. One out here in the second. Knew that he had to get rid of that mask. Ball goes up. You take the mask, throw it away so you don't step on it. The ball drifted on him a little bit, but Molina's always been a very good catcher. Zeta has retired four in a row. Alex Gonzalez, the shortstop. Bats with one out. Changeup misses away. Gonzalez had a pretty good road trip. He went nine for 24 on the road trip. Really had some key hits. Drove in a run on Tuesday with a single up the middle and part of that two run inning in the fourth. He really has been consistent from the first day. Really haven't seen the peaks and valleys that some hitters will go through. Gonzalez worked really hard in the offseason to stay strong for this year and come in here ready to have a good offensive year. I've been very consistent. Another pop-up, this one down the right side. Buster Posey calls for it and makes the catch in foul ground. Buck Martinez along with Pat Tabla here at Rogers Center. We are in the second inning. San Francisco leads the Blue Jays one to nothing. Jose Bautista. Bautista was out early today working on his hitting stroke, trying to shake a bit of a slump. Down to 227 now with the batting average. Another pop-up. Why is it that Barry Zito at 87 88 is getting pop-ups off the Blue Jay bats. You know, when you see that, that fastball is about right here. It's about chest high, and you think you can get on top of it because he's not throwing that hard, and you get underneath it. Every ball has been in the air so far for Zito. Oh, and two. He has that ability, even though he's not throwing 95 or 96, to pitch at the top of the strike zone if he has to. Just makes that curveball a little bit better. Both those pitches come out of his hand about the same plane. And even though the fastball's not lighting up the radar gun, just tough to get on top of it. A ball and two strikes, two outs here. Another curveball bounced in the dirt. Turning the ball over a little bit more is Barry Zito when you talk to some of the giant people. Pitching a little bit better. The confidence, I think, there is in Zito the way it was back in 2002 when he won the Cy Young. Pitching inside and using his fastball in the inner half is a big part of it also. 
Big bouncing ball to third. Pablo Sandoval, long throw in time to get Bautista. Gary Zito has retired all six batters he's faced. Giants lead it one to nothing. Enjoy the 2010 baseball season with MLB.TV. You can watch over 2,000 games live or on demand in HD quality. Packages starting at $99.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Giants scored a run in the first inning on a bases loaded walk. To Pablo Sandoval, and then Brad Amaro was able to get out of the inning, getting most opposed. He hit it into a fielder's choice. Barry Sanchez started things off. He had a single and scored the run. It's a first pitch changeup for a strike. And that's what Bruce Walton wants to see from his young right hander. Mix it up just a little bit. And curveball 0 2. I admire starting pitchers so much because of their ability to turn things around in a short period of time. After struggling so in the first inning, a couple of hits, a couple of walks, gave up a run, had a one, two, three second, and now he's out in front of Sanchez here and gets him on three pitches. Let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Well, Buck, the uh, Blue Jays made a roster move today, sending Mike McCoy to AAA Las Vegas in favor of Nick Green, who was signed out of AAA Albuquerque. He started the year with the Dodgers, but has since played uh, with Albuquerque. The move, Alex Anthopoulos says, is to get Mike McCoy everyday playing time at shortstop at AAA Las Vegas in hoping to find some upside there for his future. He wasn't playing much here with the Blue Jays, so Nick Green now takes that role for Cito Gaston. Nick Green's a very versatile player, and Mike McCoy was just not getting enough time to play and not a chance to play much here. So Nick Green is here in uniform and was happy to meet his new teammates. He has played on some good teams, good organization, winning teams. Played with the Yankees and the Red Sox, Tampa Bay Rays, played with the Dodgers, Triple A team. He came through the Braves system and he was signed as a free agent. He was released. He had an out clause on his contract. He was released on Wednesday and the Blue Jays jumped all over him. Signed him very quickly. Benji Molina saw something he didn't like after the last time. Benji, this is going to be a challenge yeah. for me. Benji and Jose in the same game. We got six games of this now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the Molinas. I just say Molina's going to the mound. That's all you have to say. <laughs> Make it easy, right? <laughs> so Jose saw something he didn't like from that last pitch and quickly went to the mound to discuss it with Morrow. Looked like he really let up on that changeup and slowed his delivery down. Gave Aubrey Huff a chance to see something.
And fastball ripped back to the screen. Two balls and two strikes here. Top of the third inning. Fastball down and in. We mentioned the Giants are very good when they score first. 27 and 6 when they score first. First highest win percentage in that category. The Yankees are first at 27 and 5. There's the one out walk. Third walk issued by Morrow. In his last start, Brandon Morrow threw first pitch strikes just 10 times in the 24 batters he's faced, but still pitched a great game. Strike one is important, but I think his stuff is good enough to get over at any time. Juan Uribe struck out in the first. So he had the count in his favor. Three balls and no strikes, and Morrow worked all the way back to strike him out. A ball and a strike to the Giants shortstop. How much does it get into the heads of young pitchers when they know that a couple of hitters come in here pretty, pretty hot? Does it change the way that they're going to attack them? It shouldn't. Big swing and a foul grounder. Oh, man. That fan reached for it. I think it went right through his hands and hit him <laughs> in the face. Yep. Well, you're right. Looks like he's <laughs> That'll leave being him laughed at a little <laughs> bit by his pals, if you want to call them pals. You can't, you can't say anything uh -huh. about baseball. It's a little bit harder than you think. No foul at the plate. Two balls and two strikes on Juan Uribe. Here's my point when I asked you about that uh, hot hitters as we take a look at the fan again with the bloody nose. They see the scouting reports and they know who's hot and who's not. And maybe you try and make a perfect pitch to, to try and get this guy out because you know how well he's swinging the bat. Ground ball could be two. Gonzalez to Hill for one. Back to first double play. He pulls off a red-hot hitter twice already tonight. Gonzalez has made two good defensive plays behind Brandon Morrow. Blue Jays trail by a run.
to the game. You'll see all of Jay's post-game reactions, plus highlights from the U.S. Open Round 2. Manny Ramirez's return to Fenway Park as the Dodgers take on the Red Sox, and Steven Strasburg's making his third start in his big league career. He has six strikeouts with two outs in the third. And earlier, this might make connected highlight, maybe the play of the game? Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> Mary Zito throws a first pitch strike. Looks like the fan's okay and he can laugh about it. And you know he's going to take some ribbons from his pals. Kyle Overbay behind 0-2. Steven Strasburg, as you mentioned, pitching against the White Sox tonight in Washington, has six strikeouts through three and two-thirds. Did they sell out? <laughs> I would imagine. The Nationals have been very protective of Steven Strasburg, and they've really been kind of reluctant to announce when he's going to pitch. They've been accused of announcing when he wasn't pitching and, and saying, yeah, he's going to pitch on the fourth. Well, he didn't pitch until the sixth, and they get an extra big full house. Curveball, swing and a miss. Got a piece of it, but Benji Molina held on for the strikeout. First strikeout for Zito. Here's that dominant curveball right over the top. Left-handers have hit 268 this year against Barry Zito, but it's tough to get a hit on a pitch like that. Edwin Encarnas Schoen will bat for the first time tonight. Takes the first pitch strike. Again, you can see the location of Zito's pitch is very crisp. He's been down. He's pitched to both sides of the plate, and it's 85 to 88 miles an hour. Then he drops that big hook on you. Mixes really well. You know, makes very good in-game adjustments. Sees what's working for him. Finds holes in the offensive players, and then goes ahead and attacks it. A uh, curveball. Barry Zito in seven years with the Oakland Athletics went 102 and 63. Had a career ERA of 355 in Oakland, and that's what led to the lucrative multi year contract with the Giants. Three balls and a strike. In four years with the Giants, he has gone 38 and 45. So I'm sure that has played with his head a little bit. Breaking ball inside for the walk. First base runner for the Blue Jays. A one-out walk here in the third. And for all the success that Barry Zito has had that you were talking about with Oakland, he's never gotten off to a start like he did this year. 5-0 and oh represents his best start ever. Most wins that he has had through his first 13 starts of his career. Also, the seven wins is the best. Jose Molina will bat against Zito. He has plenty of experience against the Giants left handed. He is three for 15 in his career. Jose didn't like that call and expressed just that to Danny DeMuth, the home plate umpire. One of those three hits for Molina against Zito was a home run. Starting to swing the bat. Last 10 games, over 300. That high fastball has given the Jays hitters a lot of trouble. They can't get on top of it. It just looks so tempting. And you feel like if you hit it, you're going to hit it a long way. But two things happen when you don't get on top of that high fastball. You foul it straight back or you swing right through it. A ball and two strikes to the Blue Jays number nine hitter, Jose Molina. A 
Zito's always been tough to run on. He's got a very good move. Plus, now he's added a slide step that really makes it difficult for base runners to be too aggressive against him. Brakey will on the ground. Posey goes to second, gets the force back to first. Not in time. Kerwin Danley, the first base umpire, had a real good look at it. Zito got to the bag in good shape. It looked like Molina was going to be out. Zito checking with the umpire. The return throw from Uribe was a good, strong throw. Yeah, he's got a good arm. Watch Posey take his time. He knows who the runner is. Catches the ball, make a good throw. Uribe relays it, and I think Zito had his feet messed up. Didn't get to the bag quick enough. Couldn't find the bag, and Molina beat it out. Good call by Danley over at first. Pitchers have to go find the bag first. That's the first thing. You get over there, you find it, and then you find the ball. Fred Lewis shows bunt, pulls the bat back, takes the ball. Lewis popped up to the left fielder in his first at bat. Two balls and no strikes. Fred Lewis got a chance to visit with some former teammates and some coaches and I'm sure Bruce Bochy during batting practice. There's a strike. Lewis thought that might have been outside as well. And we talked to some of the San Francisco Giants people. We asked them about Fred Lewis. Said, hey, he's just he was just a young kid and didn't get a whole lot of playing time with the Giants. Didn't get the consistent playing time that young players need to, to have. Fouled straight back. Boy, he has been a real plus to this Blue Jays lineup. Playing in center field tonight gives Vernon Wells an opportunity to bat in the DH spot. But he has changed. Lewis has changed the complexion of this lineup since he's arrived back in the middle of April. Center field, Aaron Rowan coming in and makes a head high catch. Blue Jays get a base runner off zero, still looking for their first hit. It's one to nothing, San Francisco. thrown out by Big Kyle Williams, a defensive tackle of the Buffalo Bills. He made a pretty good pitch, too. 
threw a strike right down the middle. Looked like he'd been practicing for a while, but we saw these guys throw out yeah. the first pitch here today, and then they had batting practice and everything else, and they are enjoying those big comfy chairs in the TD Candidate Trust Comfort Zone. Buffalo Bills, Jarius Bird, and Kyle Williams. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for, having, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Kyle, you made a pretty good pitch on that first pitch. Been practicing? Well, you know, I ran up the back of the mound and threw it real fast before I could think about it, so <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to outdo uh, uh, what our quarterback did last year, so now I have bragging rights. <laughs> and what was that last year. I think he bounced it, so <laughs> I threw a strike, and I, I'm proud of it. Did either one of you guys play baseball? Because you looked like you knew what you were doing in that batting cage this afternoon. Uh, I played baseball a long, long time ago in high school. I'm the same way. I played in high school a little bit. Jerry, she had uh, quite a season with nine interceptions for the Bills. Talk about uh, the opportunity to play every day and really get into the flow of the defense. Oh, it's just a blessing, you know, just being able to be out there every day and just getting healthy and I'm looking forward to being in this new defense. And, you know, it always helps having guys like Kyle and, you know, Chris Kelsey and Stroud and, you know, those guys up front to, you know, give you pressure. You can make more plays on the back end. Have you guys had your OTAs? Uh, yeah, we're, we're currently in OTAs right now. You're currently in them now. How's the new defense going, coming along? It, it's going pretty good. You know, it's, it's obviously uh, – a change, you know, it's things that we have to learn, uh, the small little ins and outs of it that we have to learn all the way from uh, up front to what we do, to all the way on the back end of what Jairus does. But that's what OTAs are for, and, you know, we're putting it all together and, uh, and trying to get it right. Well, Pat Burrow goes down swinging here to start the fourth inning. Talk about the rest of the direction that the new coach Chan Gailey is going to implement with your ball club. Well, you know, I, I think uh, – you know, it's gonna. We're gonna have more of a physical presence. You know, we're uh, we're definitely uh, harping on that in OTAs. You know, really focusing on uh, playing with technique, teaching. Uh, you know, everybody's responsibility, and uh, being a physical football team when the time rolls around. And uh, hopefully, we can just build on those things. And and when we get to training camp, we can hit the ground running. And and hopefully, it'll spill over into the year. You're going from the four three to the three four, right, guys? Yeah. Yes. How does that change what you guys do? Uh, me on the back end, it's kind of uh, pretty much the same. Um, in this defense, you know, there will be a lot of more. The safeties are interchangeable. You'll be asked to do a lot more of uh, covering, blitzing, different things like that. So um, kind of put the full package in. You know, you could be doing anything on any different play. Um, now for the front, you know, Kyle. Well, you know, what we're going to do up front, there's really uh, only one uh, one front will play that'll be any different than uh, than anything that we've done in the past. Uh, you know, we're going to play the same way. We're going to try to get on the blocks and, and beat the guy in front of us and make plays. But I think the thing that we're going to be able to do this year that we haven't been able to do in the past is uh, we're going to disguise a lot of things. We're going to be able to uh, bring pressure, like Jarris talked about, with the safeties and, and backers and, and make offensive linemen and, and uh, quarterbacks look around and, and not be totally sure where our guys are coming from. And that's something that we really haven't had, and I think it's really going to pay off for us. It sounds like an interesting kind of defense to play where everybody it gets involved. Talk about your two trips up here to Rogers Center. You're going to play the Colts in exhibition season, and then you're going to play the Bears a regular season game. Um, I, I've only had one trip up here, and, you know, it's been great. You know, unfortunately, we lost last year, but the experience that's coming up here has been, you know, great. And Kyle probably can speak to it more than that because he, he's been up here for a while and been with the organization for a lot longer. So, You know, we, we always have fun when uh, when we come up here, you know, to have an opportunity to play in, a, in a, an extended uh, range of fans, get into Toronto and, and, and get a little bit more support north of us. Uh, so, you know, speaking for everybody else on the team, uh, you know, we enjoy it and, you know, hopefully the outcome could be a little bit different. Well, we wish you nothing but the best this season. We want to thank you both for joining us and enjoy the rest of the ball game. All right, thanks, thanks, for, having thanks for having us. Enjoy it down there. All right. We will. That's Kyle Williams and Jarius Bird of the Buffalo Bills visiting here at Rogers Center. We have two outs here in the fourth inning. Pat Burrell struck out, Sandoval. Grounded out. Now Buster Posey, who hit into that fielder's choice to end the first, his first time up, lays off the breaking pitch. Sandoval was robbed of a hit by Gonzalez. Had a great view of his jump that he got on that ball. The hit went 
over the mound, but he positioned himself so beautifully and is able to take away a hit from Sandoval. Good slider in there, evens the count at two and two. Morrow had a little bit of a rocky inning in the first. Gave up two singles and walked a couple and walked in the only run of the ball game. Strike three call. Brandon Morrow strikes out two in the inning, threw a good fastball and caught Buster Posey looking. A three up, three down fourth. Come on down to Junior J Saturday tomorrow against San Francisco. Start time is 107. Make sure you get here nice and early and get over to gate 11 for the interactive zone. Player autographs, inflatables, face painting, and a whole lot more. After the game, kids 14 and under, that's right, 14 and under, sorry, parents, can run the bases. To get tickets, call 416-341-1234. Check out bluejays.com or pay a visit to most Rogers Plus locations. Junior Jays Saturday, always a very popular afternoon game. A lot of kids at the ballpark. Aaron Hill will start things off here in the fourth. Takes a high pitch up and out of the zone. Dana Demuth, the home plate umpire, has been very consistent. Not calling that high strike. Done it for both sides. Change up sails up and out of the zone. Two balls and no strikes leading off the fourth. Popped up in the left field. Shortstop Uribe in foul ground makes the catch. Long catch, long running catch for Uribe. And then a long way down there. It's been a theme that we have talked about a lot tonight. That seven balls in the air by the Blue Jays against Zito. Two pitch to Aaron Hill and he popped it up. This hot streak for Zito really started last year. His last 12 starts of 2009 combined with his first 13 this year. His ERA is under three. First pitch breaking ball just trickled down the third baseline. He'll hit it off. Lind hit it off the end of the bat. That was trouble had it stayed fair. Well, any kind of hit right now Adam Lind is looking for. Average just over 200. He's had some decent production. Eight home runs and 32 driven in. Just four for 23 on that most recent road trip. High slider. A ball on the strike to Lynn. Big slow curveball floats in there for a strike. About that bender, you better not give up on it. That big slow curveball. 
That looked like it was going to be about neck high, about halfway to home. And then he jams you with 84. <laughs> he does a great job of going back and forth with velocity and just locating, and it's kind of like got the hitter in a rocking chair. Can't really gauge the time, the speed of the pitches. The location, like you said, is so important. That fastball was designed to go up and in after that high curveball. And then up and away. We talked about it in the opening about the old adage, good pitching will stop good hitting. And the Blue Jays have run into some good pitching staffs over the last couple of weeks. Two and two. Struck him out. Off speed pitch. Lynn was way out in front. Second strike out of the night for Barry Zito. Off speed. Down and away. Lynn saw probably every pitch in the arsenal of Barry Zito that time. And came up empty. Two outs for Vernon Wells. Change up floats away. That last road trip they faced Tampa Bay, which is number one in the American League in terms of ERA. The pitching staff, San Diego is number one in the National League. Wells pops up another ball to left. The rebate down the line in fair territory makes the catch, and Barry Zito is in a groove. Blue Jays haven't gotten the hit off Zito. It's one to nothing, Giants. The Jays on Roger Sportsnet, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Back at Rogers Center, San Francisco leads the Blue Jays one to nothing as they are set to bat here in the fifth. It'll be Benji Molina, Aaron Rowan, and then the leadoff batter, Andres Torres. First pitch curveball in there for a strike. Breaking ball on the ground to third. Incarnate shown plenty of time and throws out Molina. Interleague is always an interesting time of the year, and if you want to compare these two teams, what they have done so far in interleague play, Giants a little bit better. So I guess that begs the question, well, who has the Giants beaten to get their five wins? They always play a home-and-home -home with the Oakland A's. They got swept by the A's in Oakland and swept them just last week back in San Francisco. The other 
game series that uh, San Francisco has. They took two out of three from the Baltimore Orioles. Jays, on the other hand, faced a little bit tougher teams. Yeah, the Jays have really played the tough interleague schedule. The Rockies. Arizona, they had a good run in Arizona against the Diamondbacks, but certainly playing Colorado and San Diego is not a great opportunity about, to score a lot of runs. How about Philadelphia? Yeah. St. Louis, <laughs> you know, very, very good teams. Two balls and a strike to Aaron Rowan. The Blue Jays' schedule will include the five top ERAs in the National League. Gives you an idea just how challenging their interleague schedule is this year. Three balls and a strike. Not to take away from some of the other teams, but they're not playing the Pirates, who have struggled this year with their win-loss record. And then chase the high fastball. They're not going to play Houston, who does not have a winning record. Washington doesn't have a winning record, although I wish they were now. <laughs> it seemed like they were playing them all the time to see Strasburg. Breaking ball lifted into center field. Fred Lewis back near the warning track. As it makes the catch, two outs here. Let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Well, Buxedo Gaston isn't much for the personal catcher scenario, but with Brandon Morrow, he's found a great mate in Jose Molina. The six starts with Morrow on the mound and Molina behind the plate, a 2-2 two and two with a 2.11 ERA. When John Buck catches in seven starts, a record of 2-3 and three with an 8.81 ERA. I think we've seen some great examples of that so far. A couple of mound visits in that 3-2 slider to Uribe with two on in the first inning. A real comfort level between both Molina and and more. Two outs now for Torres. That's a perfect point because when you do have a relationship of trust, Morrow trusts what Molina is doing behind the plate for him. Not that he doesn't have that same feeling about John Buck, but it seems to be working much better. And Cito Gaston has always said he doesn't like to match mm -hmm. up a catcher with a pitcher, that pitcher then becomes reliant on that catcher being back there, and then if he gets hurt, he'll feel lost. And he also said that Molina was going to play one of these first two games in this series, day game after a night game tomorrow. So he said, well, why not match him up with Brandon Morrow because they've had such good success lately. Always looking for any kind of situation to give your players a comfort level. That evens the count of two and two. Uh, two outs here in the fifth. Breaking ball, base hit up the middle. Torres around first, big turn, and he'll stop and return to first base. A two out single for Torres. I think that was a big show right there from Brandon Moore, how he showed him the curveball. Looked like he slowed down his windup and got on top to really exaggerate the curveball. I think that showed Torres the, the pitch. Two strikes, looping curveball right there. Hot hitter doesn't miss it. Torres is a threat to run. He has 11 steals and 14 attempts. Ball outside. Freddie Sanchez, a hit and a strikeout in two trips. He scored the only run of this ball game. Two balls and no strikes to the. Giants second baseman Freddy Sanchez. Center field Fred Lewis back in front of the warning track and makes the catch. Brandon Morrow gives up a two out base hit. 
but strands a runner. Beautiful evening in Toronto. Blue Jays looking for their first hit against Barry Zito. At 13th in Anaheim. Vote for your favorite Blue Jays player, Vernon Wells, Jose Bautista, and Alex Gonzalez. Cast your vote at BlueJays.com. Fans are allowed to vote a maximum of 25 times per email address. Vote early, vote often. Send your Blue Jays to the All-Star game. Well, I know the first guy that I would vote for stepping up to the plate right now. Alex Gonzalez has had a great first half to his season. 18 doubles, 13 homers, 37 driven in. You look at all his numbers compared to other major league shortstops, and he leads in so many categories. Home runs. It's just one of them. Extra base hits, total bases, slugging percentage. He's done it all offensively. And, oh, yeah, he's pretty good defensively, too. Yeah, and you know what? People that don't see him play every day will look at his air total and say, wait a minute, you know, he's made 10 errors. Well, we have seen him every day, and believe yeah. me, he is much better than those 10 errors. There's a long drive, but foul down the left field line. He has done a terrific job anchoring this inner defense. But it's always a challenge for American League shortstops because you've got Derek Cheater of the Yankees, and he is annually among the leaders in votes for the All-Star Game. Now Gonzalez has done a good job when it comes to the interleague. Only Josh Hamilton has a higher batting average. Than Alex Gonzalez. Pretty good hitters up there. Ichiro and Josh Hamilton. Sharply hit. Uribe knocks it down. He recovers, but not in time. It should be an infield hit for Alex Gonzalez. First hit of the ball game. Well, if he came up with it cleanly the first time, I think he has a chance. But Uribe goes to his left, and on that short hop, the ball squirts out of his glove. We talked about his strong arm, but it's not strong enough to get that guy. Yeah, and that took exceptional effort to keep it on the infield, and that clearly was the first base hit off of Barry Zito. A leadoff single here in the fifth by Gonzalez. Jose Bautista. That's that first pitch change of Bautista. Two for 29 on the road trip. It's been a real struggle for him. And he talks about timing. Oh, he's not getting his foot down early enough to attack the baseball where he was, the way he was in May. That's right. He says he's not getting ready. Really feels like he's rushing everything right now. And hit him. 
Okay, got him on the elbow. Yep. Looked like there was some doubt in Baptista's mind whether or not that hit him. And Bochy's the manager going to come out and talk to Dana DeMuth. Yeah, and Dana DeMuth asked Kerwin Danley, did Jose Bautista make an effort and swing at that ball? He called it a strike initially and then asked Dirk Danley if he went around. Well, clearly hit him on the right elbow. But if you swing at a ball and it hits you, the swing takes precedent of the hit batter. That clearly hit him on the elbow, uh -huh. and you call time as immediately as that ball hit him. So the first two reach here look like it got Bautista on the funny bone, like he's lost the feeling in his arm temporarily. Just the second batter all year that Zito has hit shows you the kind of command that he has had all season long. Uh, Blue Jays need to take advantage of this situation here. Two aboard, nobody out for Overbay. I mentioned how Overbay has been swinging the bat lately. Had a good road trip, eight for 25 on the road trip. He's five for 10 over his last three games. Got a good pitch to hit there. He did. He waited back on it, saw it, and took a good rip at it. They have the right guy up there. The way that he has been swinging the bat with a couple of runners on. A good fastball there. Overbay checking with Danny DeMuth just to make sure it wasn't too high. In the outfield is really spread out, reflecting just how well Overbay has gone with the pitches lately. We have seen him drive the ball to left field, right center field. A ball and two strikes to Lyle Overbay. Nobody out here in the fifth. Bouncing ball to third. Sandoval has to wait on it. Safe at second base. Sandoval had to back up and play that big hop, and that cost him an opportunity. How about Bautista hustling to second to beat the throw? That's what the key of the whole play was, Buck, is the third baseman, Sandoval, has to wait back, but Bautista breaks and doesn't take anything for granted. He backed up on it, and then the ball had trouble transferring from his glove to his hand and Bautista beats it clearly you see the ball almost to second base before Bautista beats it CB Buckner the second base umpire was positioned perfectly to make the call he had a great view of it saw Bautista clearly beat the throw nobody out great opportunity for the Jays Edwin and Conan Schoen he walked in the third inning. Swinging a drive down the left field line, but that's fouled. Jumped all over that first pitch, or just out ahead of it a bit, and pulled it fast. Now, Encarnacion can hit the high fastball. We talked about that enough all, already tonight, but his swing is conducive to getting on top of that fastball. He's had great success with the bases loaded, 364, three grand slam. Watch how he really uses his hands and he throws the barrel of the bat at the ball. Zito pushed him back for that inside fastball. A ball and a strike. 
Welcome back, Looper. That's going to fall. One runs in to score. Right behind him is Bautista. Here's the throw. Offline. Gonzalez and Bautista come in to score on the broken back single by Edwin and Connor Show. Blue Jays lead it 2-1. to one. Just fight it off, and that's what Encarnacion does. On the inner half, and he muscles the ball out into left field. Watch Bautista, who recognizes the ball as a base hit and gets a clean break from second base and scores really easily. He didn't need to slide. Heads up base run by Jose Bautista. Uh, he saw the bat break, the ball falling in front of the left fielder, Aubrey Huff, and Encarnacion comes up with a clutch hit. What's the last thing you do if you're a runner at second base? You mm -hmm. check the outfield. Yep. They look for the outfielders to see where they're positioned. And Bautista, hit by that Zeno pitch, scores the go-ahead run. You take a look at the outfield so you can get an idea of where they are playing. Good shot of both Gonzalez and Bautista checking to see where the positions, where the players were positioned. Jose Molina at first and second, nobody out still. Squares to bunt. Pushes it right out in front of home plate. Benji goes to third for the force out, back to first. Not in time. Killed it right at home plate. Benji Molina came out of the shoot quickly and got the lead runner at third. It's the right play because Cito Gaston wants to stay out of the double play, so he asks his catcher to lay a ball down. That ball initially went in foul territory and then squirted there. Heads up play by Benji Molina to pick it up and get the lead runner. Sound so. about almost had time to get Jose Molina at first. One out. Blue Jays have scored twice here in the fifth. Fred Lewis bends back from a curveball. Ball in his strike. And Khan is shown at second, Molina at first. Ground ball should be two. Sanchez, Uribe. Back to Posey, double play. A 4-6-3 double play gets Zito out of the fifth, but the Blue Jays on Incarnate shown single take the lead.
lead here as they're set to work the sixth inning. Brandon Marl, Barry Zito have both been very tough tonight from the mound. Yeah, Blue Jays get to Zito finally in the fifth inning, getting their first base hit, and they cash in a single by Encarnacion to plate their two runs. Brandon Morrow, the first inning, had two walks and two hits. But since then, he has been very good, giving up just one hit and one walk since the first inning. And that's exactly what his pitching coach, Bruce Morrow, wants, or Bruce Walton wants from Morrow, is the ability to stop the bleeding and minimize the damage. And he did that in the first, and now he's pitching with the lead. Aubrey Huff takes the first pitch strike. Huge shift now for Aubrey Huff. We didn't see this his first couple of times up. Now three infielders on the right side. Deep drive to right field. This ball is deep. Lewis at the wall, reaches in, knocks it down with his glove. Aubrey Huff around first, headed to second, and stops there. Fred Lewis looked like he got his glove on it. Up against that wall in deep right center, shaking his head now as if he thought he might have caught it. Or should have caught it. Looked like a breaking ball from Morrow, and Aubrey Hall, who is hot, grunts and gets this one deep to right field. He thinks he has enough of it. Lewis gets back, and he just missed it. This hit beyond his glove as he got over there and kind of. Just jumped and mistimed it a bit, but it's a leadoff double for Aubrey Huff. Caribe <laughs> gets hit. Morrow trying to come inside and push Caribe back off the plate. Hits him on the back of the left elbow. Sixth time this year that Brandon Morrow has hit a batter, and that one looked like it was the elbow or the rib area from Uribe. So the two hot hitters for the Giants open up the sixth inning by getting on base. Same scenario the Blue Jays had in there. Bottom of the fifth. Pat Burrow now. Burrow has walked and struck out. Hitting 344 with the Giants after they picked him up. Breaking ball. Molina does a good job of backhanding that ball in the dirt. Another visit to the mound to talk things over with his pitcher. Mason Frazier begins to loosen up down in the Blue Jays' bullpen. Pat Burrow was signed by the Giants to a minor league contract on the 29th of May. Played just five games in AAA. Fouls this one back. Burrow hit just 202 with the Rays in 84 bats. He came over here then. Freddy Sanchez got healthy and he got in the lineups. No surprise that their offense took off. Burrow in the right field. Bautista on the run and won't make a catch. It's off the wall. Huff had to hold his ground. Now here's the wave from home. They got a shot at him at home. Molina with a great tag and Huff is out. Jim Flannery, the third base coach, took a gamble and lost. Right there, first out of the inning at home plate. It's a tough one. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Jose Bautista might have decoyed him a little bit by putting his arm up there, thinking that he's going to catch it. Aubrey Huff was really waiting at second base to see if it was going to fall in, and by then it was too late. Two throws, one from... Bautista, the other from Hill, nails and watch him at second base. He goes back thinking he's going to catch it. And you got to realize that there is no way that he's going to score on that ball. It ricocheted off the wall right to Bautista. He is dead on arrival at the plate. One out now for Pablo Sandoval. The infield will play back in this situation with one out. 
trying to give the fielders as much range as possible not concerned so much about saving that run you draw the infield in it'll cost you two on a base hit popped out of play Burrow gets credit for a single ends up at second base on the play at the plate. Aubrey Huff was out 9 4 2 a great relay by Aaron Hill. Another assist for Jose Bautista in the outfield. He leads the team now with four. A ball and a strike. On the ground this will bring home a run. Sandoval is out at first base. Uribe comes in to score and we are tied at two. Pat Burrow moves up to third base with two outs. Buster Posey 0 for 2 so far tonight. Takes the first pitch strike. All popped right out of Molina's glove. In fact, he was a bit surprised it had a little late finish on it. Posey, a young catcher, is playing first base for the Giants, just trying to add some pop to their lineup. Inside fastball. Probably their highest rated prospect. They have a couple other pitchers down in the minor leagues, but for everyday players, Buster Posey is probably their number one. Got off to a good start down in AAA this year. Fouled back out of play. Posey was the first round selection of the Giants fifth overall in the 2008 draft so he has made it very quickly up to the big leagues he was the top college player in the country in 2008 breaking ball lifted to left field Adam Lind is there and he makes the out. Posey's retired to close out the inning. Brandon Morrow gives up a couple of runs, a couple of hits and a run. These Giants have tied it. Burrow hits a base hit into right. Bautista makes a great play. Aubrey Huff is gunned down at home. Commentator clothing provided in part by Z Zenya. Statistical information provided by Stats Inc. Music provided by Universal Canada. A picture perfect evening here at Rogers Center.
Roof wide open. CN Tower looming high above, and we have a tie ball game. 2 2. Barry Zito misses with that first pitch curveball to Aaron Hill. Hill has popped up twice tonight. That high, slow pitch is so tantalizing. You just have to fight yourself to lay off of it. Discipline. You need that discipline at the plate to say that's not what I want. Lifts it to center field, and Aaron Rowan comes in after taking a couple of steps back and makes the catch. We were talking before the game about Barry Zito and the type of pitcher that he has become, and he reminds us of some lefties that we faced back in the day. Scott McGregor comes to mind of the Orioles. Frank Tanana became this type of pitcher after he hurt his arm. He throw a lot of high fastballs. 88, yep. 89. Mike Flanagan was a lot like this. Jimmy Key was a lot like this. Take a little off, put a little on. The fastball seems a lot faster than it really is when it comes in there. Yeah, and you see that pitch and that big breaking ball that Lynn takes for a strike is very difficult to stay back and attack. Well, what you don't want to do when you see that curveball and you're fooled by it is swing at it and you're an easy out. It's better just to let it go and say, okay, I'll look at the next one. You know what you don't want to do is get into a guessing game with Barry Zito when you're at the plate. So what is your approach? I would think about location. Because he can't throw the ball by you, I would think about location. Is he stronger on the inner half to me? Or look away? If you look away, you, you can still turn on his fastball if he throws it in there because it's not that hard. That might be the best way to go ahead and attack somebody like a Barry Zito. Two balls and two strikes to Adam Lynn. Fouls off that breaking ball. We used to have a phrase that we called comfortable over. <laughs> Guy would go up there, yeah, you didn't feel bad. Oh, I'm going to get him next time. Well, I'll, I'll get him next time. Well, I'm going to get him this next time. Over. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sitting on the bench at the end of the day, and you're like, how did I get a hit against this guy? And there's that off-speed pitch, and Lynn's out in front of it. Charlie Lee Brandt was a lot like that. Take a little something off, spot the ball. You try to get into a guessing game of what he's going to do, and you end up going back to the dugout. Good pitch there by Zito to pick up his third strikeout. Second time that he has gotten Adam Lynn tonight. Yeah, you find yourself talking to yourself in the clubhouse going, boy, I'm going to get that Zito next time I face him. But Barry Zito can really pitch. And this is what we saw over his seven years in Oakland. He won the Cy Young, as we mentioned, in 2002, went 23-5. and five. His fastball then was in the low 90s. Now they had that great pitching staff, the trio of Hudson, Mulder, and Zito in Oakland. And then they hit free agency, and the Giants kind of surprised everybody when they got into the bidding and signed him to that beautiful contract. Two balls and a strike to Vernon Wells. Two outs here in the sixth. Giants jumped out in front. Scored a run in the first. Blue Jays took the lead in the fifth on the two-run single by Edwin Encarnacion. Vernon Wells taps it foul at the plate. And then the Giants tied it up with a single run on the ground out by Pablo Sandoval. That's where we stand 2-2 here in the sixth. Blue Jays have but two hits against Barry Zito. Her ball bounced in there. Full count. Well, I just tried to get on top of that high fastball and was late on it. 
just enough velocity to mess with your timing. Foul ball. Third base umpire, Doug Eddings, called it quickly down to third. He had perfect view of that ball when Sandoval fielded it. He was outside the line. So he's thrown him a 3-2 changeup. He had a 3-2 curveball. That's the one he just fouled down the third baseline. What else does he have in there? Well, this is where you made the point. You can't guess with Zito. You just have to protect the zone right now. Got him with the changeup. Well, he's expanded his zone. Zito gets the strikeout. Two in the inning. Barry Zito has four strikeouts. We are tied after six. When Jesse Litch takes on Matt Kane for tickets, call 341 1234, bluejays.com, or visit most Rogers locations. Jesse Litch makes his second start coming off the deal. Matt Kane has given up just two earned runs in his last five starts. Now Jesse Litch will be anxious to bounce back after his first start of the season in Colorado. Coverage of that game will start at 1230 tomorrow on Rogers Sportsnet. Jason Frazier comes out of the bullpen for the 30th time this season. He picks up Brandon Morrow, who went six good innings. Yeah, Morrow certainly did. Six innings uh, in two earned runs. He'll turn it over to Jason Frazier now. There are his numbers. Frazier last worked on the 13th at Colorado when he had a scoreless one inning of work. Benji Molina takes the first pitch strike here in the seventh. Molina is grounded out twice. He was robbed of a base hit by Aaron Hill in his first at bat. Hill going up the middle, diving and backhanded the ball and threw Molina out. Good pitchers battle here tonight. Just two runs on five hits for the Giants, two runs on two hits for the Blue Jays. A ball and two strikes. First batter for Jason Frazier. Cedar Gaston is kind of flip flop Frazier in camp in the way they utilize him. Camp has taken over more of the work at the back. Eighth inning setting up for Greg. And depending on who the hitter is, if there's lefties coming up, you'll see Scott Downs yeah. late in the game also. Downs has done a great job. Handling lefties and righties, but this combination of Downs and Camp and Greg all 
figured he'd pitch the latter part of the game. There's that good changeup for the strikeout. Frazier gets his first batter tonight. Well, he can do that. It's a split change. It's not a true fork ball or split finger. He just takes his index finger and his middle finger and splits them a little bit when he's on the ball. And that gets that good movement, good arm action. Pitching line for Brandon Morrow is brought to you by MLB 10, the show only on PlayStation. Morrow's night is over with six innings of work. The strikeouts, just four of them tonight. That is the least amount of strikeouts that Moro's had since May the 31st when he struck out one batter in a game against Tampa. And he won that game. Aaron Rowan in a hole 0 2. Well, Morrow pitched six innings, threw 100 pitches, but probably the biggest toll on him was that first inning. He threw 33 pitches in the first inning. And certainly after laboring through a very long inning, Cito Gaston didn't want to send him back out for the seventh. Another changeup that missed down low. There it is. Got on that good changeup. Jose Molina will tag out Rowan. Two strikeouts here in the inning for Jason Frazier. Well, you have to respect his arm because he can throw at 93 miles an hour. But then he drops that split change and the movement and the depth of the, the pitch really fools Rowan. Two outs here in the seventh. We are tied at two all. Andres Torres had a single in his last at bat in the fifth. You know, it's really been a good month for Brandon Morrow pitching wise. He just doesn't have anything to show for this month. His ERA, it'll go up just a little bit after tonight's game. It came in here at just over one and the starts that he has had this month 14 strikeouts, four walks, and 0 and 1 record. Now he's pitched very well against the Yankees and the Rockies. Lost a 4-3 game to the Yankees. He got no decision in that game and then lost that one to nothing game in Colorado. He has pitched very well. Yep, just gave up two here tonight. A ball and two strikes on Andres Torres. Mason Frazier coming out of the pen, pounding the strike zone. Spoiled a pretty good pitch right there. Ball got away. Ball, two balls and two strikes now with two outs. He had him set up for it. Yeah, he really did. Torres hit a curveball from Brandon Morrow back up the middle. Jose Molina might want to stay hard inside right here on this 2 2 pitch. Fastball away, strikes out the side. Jason Frazier comes out of the bullpen and strikes out the side. Good fastball gets Torres to end the inning. We are tied at two.
I'm Moosehead, Canada's premium logger. Barry Zito retires the first batter of the inning. Alex Gonzalez on a fly ball to center. Jose Bautista shows bunt. Bautista was hit by a pitch in his last at bat. Came around to score on Encarnacion's two run single. Hit on the ground, Uribe with the good grab. Throws to Posey at first two quick outs here in the seventh. Uribe's got a lot of flash at shortstop, and he's got pretty good range, and of course that's strong going on. He's played multiple positions in his career, in the outfield, third base, second base, but I think he's most comfortable at shortstop. He's got good range, and you're right, a good strong throwing arm, and he doesn't mind showing it off either. Still thinking about his hitting, though. He got that sore elbow because he was hit by a pitch in his last at bat. Scott Downs loosens up down in the Blue Jays bullpen. Matt Overbay goes after the first pitch. We are in the bottom of the seventh with the score tied to all. Curveball foul back. Zito says that the whole key to throwing his curveball is really pulling down on that middle finger when he is throwing that breaking ball. It gives it the torque and the, the spin that he needs to throw it in the strike zone. 0 oh 2 to Overbay. Hit on the ground to second. Freddy Sanchez is there. A very quick inning for Barry Zito. Just six pitches in the inning. We have played seven complete. We're still tied at two.
schedule always presents challenges for the Blue Jays. Brian Butterfield is in charge of taking all the advanced scouting notes, putting them together, and trying to teach his players the tendencies of San Francisco players. Sal Buterra spent the last week watching the Giants, and the Blue Jays also have relied on Dan Roan, the Las Vegas AAA manager, who for the past three seasons was a manager at AAA Fresno, and so he has a pretty good feel for what these young San Francisco players are doing. All of that intelligence combined, the responsibility of Brian Butterfield. Well, Butterfield will get the reports and combine them and then break them down and explain how he wants the defense played and try to get some tendencies that they have seen over the last couple of series. Scott Downs comes out of the bullpen to start the eighth inning here. Fred Sanchez swings and rips the first ball to left field. Adam Lynn on the run makes the catch. One out. Downs making his 314th appearance for the Blue Jays. That passes Roy Halliday on the all-time club list. He is now three games shy of Jimmy Key, who made 317 appearances. Scott Downs a very valuable reliever for Cito Gaston. Yeah, and good numbers. Just seven walks this year. Now in 29 innings pitched. He leads the American League with 16 holds. He's added a new wrinkle to his repertoire as well. The old cut fastball that served him very well against lefties and righties. Good pitch there. Lefties hitting under 200 against Downs. And a good one at the plate now. Aubrey Huff had a couple of hits. Single and a double, and he's walked. Inside fastball. Downs trying to crowd Huff. Two balls and a strike. Huff. Then the majority of his career in the American League. First with Tampa Bay, then a long stint at Baltimore, and part of last season with the Tigers. Late on a fastball. Downs continues to pound him inside. Stay in there, stay in there, make him think about that. And then you can sweep him with that curveball. Remember seeing Aubrey Huff when he was a young player with Tampa Bay, and his hitting coach was Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs said this guy's going to be a good hitter, good major league hitter. On the ground, one defender on the left side, it's in Carnation, in time to get Aubrey Huff. now for Juan Uribe. Uribe got hit by a pitch back in the sixth inning by Brandon Morrow. Inside fastball. Thinking fastball misses down, a ball on a strike. Uribe spent six years with the White Sox, but this is only the second at bat he has against Scott Downs. Can you say lefty specialist? <laughs> He's going to be facing those guys who swing from the other side of the dish. Well, that's why Downs is so valuable to this team. He had a big left-hander in the middle of this trio, and he got Aubrey Huff. That was the key batter for him. Ground ball right to Hill on his knees. Now upright, throws out the Uribe. Good inning for Scott Downs. Jason Frazier and Downs doing a number on the Giants. We are tied middle of the eighth.
Burger King, home of the Whopper. After the Blue Jays had taken the lead in the fifth inning, things looked very dicey in the sixth. A double a hit by pitch, and then this off the bat of Pat Burrell down the right field line. Aubrey Huff tries to score, but a relay throw from Bautista to Hill to Molina nails him at the plate. And that's where we sit, the difference in the game. They were only Long drive left field. Edwin Incarnation has just gone deep. Carter Schoen has all three ribbies tonight against Barry Zito. The Blue Jays lead it three to two. First pitch swinging. Edwin Encarnacion, he times that breaking ball and rips it to left. Zito's given up six home runs this year coming into this game. Only one of them on a first pitch. Well, this is number two. No doubt about it, the left field. And kind of shown number nine on the season. He now has 22 ribbies. Barry Zito has been in a little bit of a funk as far as the home runs go. This is his seventh straight game in which he's allowed a home run. Prior to that, he had not allowed a home run in the first seven starts. And all of his home runs this year have been solo home runs. Popped up over in front of the Giants dugout. So I guess if you're going to give up home runs, that's the best way to do it with nobody on base. Well, Scott Downs is the pitcher of record for the Blue Jays. Sergio Romo starts to loosen up for San Francisco. Boy, the Blue Jays pitching has been very good here tonight. Zito, too, has only allowed three hits, but he trails by a run. Edwin and Carnes shown with all three runs driven in here tonight. The curveball. Cap foul. A ball and two strikes on the Blue Jays catcher Jose Molina. Base hit right field Molina. You got to think that he was looking for something away. Just the way he went and attacked that ball. Another big run out there as Dave Forget, the pitching coach, is calling down to see if the right hander is ready. Man on, nobody out here in the eight. Blue Jays have taken the lead on Edwin and Connor Jones' ninth home run of the season. Blue Jays back home taking advantage of the long ball again. First pitch, long ball. They've done that a few times this year. And Lewis waves at a breaking pitch. A ball on the strike. Fred Lewis taking a long look down at Brian Butterfield now with one strike. Big add-on run standing over at first base. And the breaking pitch. Cut on by Fred Lewis. Barry Zito has pitched eight innings twice this season against the Cardinals in San Francisco. Won the ball game two to nothing and then backed that up against the Rockies. He won that game 5-2 going eight innings in both of those games. Lewis is late on a fastball. Big strikeout for Barry Zito. One out here in the eighth. One 
One out for the second baseman, Aaron Hill. Change of first pitch out in front. Hill has popped up three times tonight. And he's been very aggressive against Barry Zito. Not letting that ball travel to him. Like he's trying to go out there and get it and let it instead of letting it come to him. Zito recognizes that and keeps throwing it slower to him. Another change up lifted into center field. Aaron Rowan backs up, gets in line to make the throw to second. Molina have to hold this ground. Two outs now. Zeta wants a new baseball before he will face Adam Lynn. Lynn has struck out twice. Not a lot of speed at first base, so they're going to play behind the runner. Close down that hole against Adam Lynn. Really pinching the middle against Adam Lynn. First pitch fastball. Boy, Zeta's done a good job of using all of his pitches tonight and none of the Blue Jays hitters except him kind of shown have really hit the ball hard. They only have three hits and he's got two of them. Wow. Now there's what you talked about looking for a particular pitch but don't swing at the other one. Yep. And Adam Lynn got in between right there. Not having an idea what you want to do. 0 oh and 2 with two outs here in the eighth. Just off the plate. High breaking ball. Stevens accounted two and two. He wants to throw that breaking ball, start it out at eye level, and then drop it into the strike zone. That really sets up his fastball there, where he can get hitters swinging at it. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball, hit up to second baseman. Sanchez flips to Uribe for the force out. Edwin and Connor Jones had a big night. A two run single in the fifth, and this solo shot to start off the eighth. His ninth home run has given the Blue Jays a 3-2 lead against Barry Zito and the Giants. Reflecting over that first pitch home run to Edwin Encarnacion. He has had a good night here tonight, but he finds himself trailing three to two. He certainly has eight innings for the third time this year. He's only given up four hits and three runs, and Encarnacion has knocked them all in. And right now, he finds himself behind. And we head into the ninth inning. The Blue Jays 
are going to make a couple of moves. Dwayne Wise has taken over for Adam Lind in left field. Some defense and some speed out there. And on the mound, the closer, Kevin Gregg, comes into the ballgame. To face Pat Burrow, Gregg looking for his 17th save of the season. That would make a winner out of Scott Downs. Tapped on the ground in front of the mound. Gregg's got some time and makes a strong throw to retire Pat Burrow. First out of the night. That was the whole key to that play is he had to take his time. Burrow doesn't run that well. The ball was cued and it was spinning off that turf. Greg stayed under control and made a good play to get him out. Bullpen has now retired seven straight Giants. Frazier struck out the side in the seventh. Downs had a one, two, three, eight. And now Greg gets the leadoff batter here in the ninth. Boy, the whole game turned around with Aubrey Huff getting thrown out at the plate back in the sixth. That could have been dicey, that, that inning. Double hit by a pitch and then the ball down the line to become the first out at the plate. Vandeville sharply on the ground. Overbay has it and he'll step on the bag. Two outs. That's why you guard the line. Late in the ball game. One run ball game and that had a chance to sneak down into the right field corner, but Overbay was guarding the line. You don't even see him in your picture. Now there he is, right there. A guard against that ball, getting by him for extra bases. Outfield will do the same thing. They'll play deep. Hot shot to third. Go ahead and do it all, Edward. What a night for Encarnacion. Greg gets his 17th save. Downs picks up the win. Encarnacion had a great night. Not with just the bat. How about the glove? Snares it and then throws out Posey at first base. So he does it with his glove. He does it with his bat. Blue Jays win the opener of the Giants series 3-2. to two. Great pitching performance by the entire staff. Greg picks up the save. 3-2. Blue Jays win it. Stay tuned for Connected.